you were looking at the most badass photographer of all time, Catherine Lois. In 1966, at the age of 21, she bought a one-way ticket to Laos to cover the Vietnam War. All she had with her was a Leica camera and $100. Her trademark in her photographs was how close she was to the soldiers. And it clearly comes across in her photos. I mean, look at the faces. There's so much depth and emotion and empathy in her photos. And her closeness came from the fact that she was close. She was there sleeping on the front lines in foxholes with the soldiers, going on patrol with them on a daily basis. In February 1967, she became the first journalist to jump in a combat mission. That's right, she strapped on a parachute and jumped out of a fucking plane with nothing but a few cameras. And she got these incredible images on the way down. Can you imagine? And she faced a lot of sexism. People claimed that she slept her way into that combat jump. But guess what? That was her 84th parachute jump. She had trained as a teenager to jump out of airplanes. So she was probably more experienced than most of the other people who jumped there. In April that same year, she took what are probably her most well-known images. She photographed medic Vernon Wyke tending to a dying Marine. She was so close to take these images, but Wyke, when he saw the images later, didn't even know that she had been there. And these photos coming out of Vietnam, you have to remember, were so important at the time because people didn't get this sort of inside real-time look at war in previous wars. So her photos, along with other members of the press corps, went a long way in swaying public opinion about what was going on. But she is not even close to being done yet. 19 days after her photo of Wyke, she was in a mortar ambush, and a mortar exploded right in front of her, and she credits her camera for saving her life. She was pretty badly injured, but she managed to come back to the field just about four months later. This story gets more intense. In early 1968, during the Tet Offensive, she and another photographer were captured by the North Vietnamese. Not only did she manage to talk their way out of it, she convinced them to let her take pictures of them, of the first images of North Vietnamese soldiers behind enemy lines. And this went on to be published as a cover story for Life magazine. After that, she spent some time in the United States. She was hired to photograph Woodstock in August of 1969. But guess what? On the first day of the festival, she decided not to take any more pictures, but to participate. And then afterwards, she spent months traveling with other Vietnam veterans, just hanging out and doing drugs and shit. And thus ends the 1960s for Catherine Lewis. In the early 1970s, Lawag filmed and co-directed Operation Last Patrol. It's a documentary about Ron Kovac, a Vietnam veteran who went on to become an outspoken opponent of the war. Kovac is best known for his autobiography, Born on the Fourth of July, which was turned into an Academy Award-winning film directed by Oliver Stone and starring Tom Cruise. Let's listen to a clip from Operation Last Patrol. Before I left Vietnam, my company was doing a search and destroy mission and uh, on this search and destroy mission, we hit some heavy NVA fire, heavy uh, mortar showing, and some women and children got wounded about 25 meters from me. I was behind a rock. I was pretty well protected. I could hear them screaming and yelling, and I didn't go out to help them because I, I only had two more weeks to go before I went back to the world, and I wasn't taking any chances at all. Lua would return to Vietnam in April of 1975 to document the fall of Saigon. That same year, Lua would head to Lebanon to document the Civil War, for which she would be the first female recipient of the Robert Kappa Gold Medal Award, which is for the, quote, best published photographic reporting from abroad requiring exceptional courage and enterprise, clearly well-deserved for these amazing photos. In 1979, she headed to Northern Ireland to document the 10-year anniversary of the beginning of the unrest known as the Troubles. And it's a really exceptional set of images she was able to make in just one month of being there documenting the unrest. In the fall of 1980, Lua returned to Vietnam to document five years after the war had officially ended. And she traveled throughout the country documenting the effects of the war and the people there and getting back to everyday life, but also showing how people were affected in the long term. Lua would cover other conflicts in the 80s, including spending some time in Libya, but by the end of the decade, she was done with war photography. She spent most of the 90s and early 2000s publishing books, and she ran a vintage clothing boutique in the Los Angeles area. In 2005, she took her final photo assignment, photographing the medic, Vernon White, 
who she had photographed nearly 40 years before. It's an excellent portrait and a fitting close to her career. Lois died of cancer in July of 2006. Lois is one of the greatest war photographers of all time. She's left an incredible legacy, and I think everyone should know about her and the important photos that she took. In fact, it's clear her life would make an incredible movie, so I want to know who should play Katrine Lois in her biopic.